everybody. I'm Sarah Kitteringham, and welcome back to Overkill Reviews. First up, I want to say thank you. We hit 100,000 subscribers, and that is completely badass. If you're not yet amongst the converted, you know what to do. If you are, thank you. Before we get to this week's review, I wanted to respond to one of the comments that I got on my Cannibal Corpse review, which was a little bit surprising. It was a lot of people very upset that I made an offhand remark that Cannibal Corpse isn't particularly technical. Now, when compared to acts like Atheist, Gore Guts, Death, Blood Incantation, Crucimentium, they're not particularly technical. But that's okay. It fits their horror movie worshipping sound, and it wasn't a criticism, just an observation. Today I'm reviewing a band that has finally gotten the cred that they deserve. But unfortunately, it's about two decades after they peaked. If you dig bluesy sludge rock that channels an exploitation worship, then get ready. We're reviewing the brand new studio album by Electric Wizard. It's called Wizard Bloody Wizard, and it's out today on the band's own imprint, Witchfinder Records, which is distributed by Spine Farm. Electric Wizard formed way back in the early 90s in the United Kingdom and is spearheaded by the notoriously combative guitarist and vocalist Juice Auburn. He is now joined by his wife Liz Buckingham, who also plays guitars. She first appeared on the 2004 album We Live, and before that she cut her teeth playing in American sludge acts, 13 and Sorbeen. Electric Wizard's best known album is the 2000 masterpiece of sludge metal, which is called Dope Throne. Although arguably, Come My Fanatics, is a bit more consistent, but unfortunately it doesn't feature their very best track, which is this album's Funeralopolis. Arguably, Electric Wizard is one of the biggest reasons behind the massive rise of stoner sludge in the last 10 years. This band makes monolithic, crushing doom metal, but it's also very interested and invested in drugs, exploitation, sex, the occult, and all those types of themes. For this album, Electric Wizard has made some big changes, and they have two relatively new members on board. They include the bassist Clayton Burgess of Satan Satters, and the newer drummer Simon Poole. In the press release for this album, the band said they wanted to get back to a primal sound, citing Hendrix, Zeppelin, and Blue Cheer as influences. It's what they call heavy, heavy super fucking blues, total snail-paced funeral boogie for this 21st century hell. Do they achieve that on Wizard Bloody Wizard? Let's find out. The first song that we're gonna check out is track two off the album. It's called Necromania. In true Electric Wizard fashion, the song is presumably named after the 71 exploitation flick called Necromania, A Tale of Weird Love. And like that film, the song is unsettling, dark, psychedelic, and a little bluesy. This is a pretty even, repetitive track. There's a lot of segments that are just repeating throughout the song, and that's something that Electric Wizard has a bad habit of doing. So far, the song is bluesy and subdued, and the production is really fitting. It's giving the guitars a nice crunch. Let's hear it on the solo. I can definitely understand why Oborn brought up Blue Cheer as a reference point. If you're not familiar with their band, I would absolutely recommend that you listen to their classic Vince Bus Eruptum. It came out in 1968 and it channels in noisy blues, garage, stoner rock. They rule and they have been a definite influence on Electric Wizard since day one. Next up, we're gonna listen to Hear the Siren Scream. From a lyrical
historical perspective, this song is fairly dystopian and downtrodden. Originally, when I saw the track listing, I thought sirens, as in mythological sirens, but they're literally addressing the sirens of war. Now for a brief divergence, because there's two things about this album I'm already finding surprising. First up, there is not a single spoken word sample on this entire record. This is strange to me, because if you remember, you know, the classic Dope Throne, there's that really iconic sample at the beginning where it says, if you get into one of these groups, there's only a couple of ways you can get out. One is death, the other is mental institutions. Later on in their discography, like 2014's Time to Die, there's tons of samples. Honestly, I miss it. I think those samples were an integral part of Electric Wizard. They made the music super dense, heavy, and really ugly. Here, the vocal samples are gone, and a lot of the intensity of the music is really dialed back. But let's see what else this song has to offer. Let's listen to the ending. Same riff, same soundscape, it's all repeating. The sonic landscape of this album has really been cleaned up and it really reminds me of their debut more than anything else in their discography. It's because the production is blues rock oriented, it's warm, and this time around, the band did the recording all by themselves in their Saturnine recording studio. It was recorded, mixed, and produced by Liz and Juice. Depending on whether or not you really dug the oppressive atmosphere that Electric Wizard conjured up on their previous studio albums, it's gonna really affect whether or not you like this record, which is a lot more stripped back. It's probably gonna gain them fans because it's more simple, but for people who are diehards, they might have rum with it. The third and final song that we're gonna listen to is Morning of the Magicians. It's the longest song on the album, and it's the kind of track that a campus radio DJ is gonna put on so they can go outside for their smoke break. Did you catch that little earworm? It's a repeating chorus. We heard that at the beginning of the video review when we were watching the video for See You in Hell, and now that chorus is here again. And I think that, honestly, the band is literally telling you that they're going full circle. This album sounds the most like their first album, and the first song on the album has the repeating chorus in the last song of the album. We still have another seven minutes of this song to go, but it doesn't really change that much throughout. There's a lot to discuss and to go over right now because this album, it definitely changes the Electric Wizard formula. The bones are still there, but a lot of what made the band sound the way that they do has been removed. Let's talk about that in the verdict. So I've already talked about one of the big changes and that's that there's no samples. The other big change, this is the shortest album in the Electric Wizard discography. If you're someone who got a little bit exhausted by the noisy tendencies of the last couple records, it's probably a good thing for you. I personally like it. Six songs, 45 minutes, nice and scaled back. Now musically, as you've heard, this album is pretty consistent, even, and bluesy. I think that it's aiming to have more in common with bands like Sir Lord Baltimore, like Blue Cheer, like Coven. Honestly, the shift is theoretically a good idea for Electric Wizard because the entire genre of stoner doom, which they really helped inspire, is now at a critical mass and there's so many bands that are recycling riffs that for them to remove themselves and to go back to the classic way is actually pretty smart. That said, this album would really benefit from more shifts in mood and pacing. It's pretty one-dimensional. Finally, we need to discuss the album title and the cover. It's pretty common for doom bands to do Black Sabbath worship titles. Look at Sleep, who put out Volume 1 as opposed to Black Sabbath Volume 4. Look at Church of Misery, who did Master of Brutality instead of Master of Reality. And here we've got Wizard Bloody Wizard instead of Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. And that's cool. It's a genre standard. I get it. I fucking worship Black Sabbath too, man. On the other hand, 
the cover. I, I, I don't really know what the band was going for, but when I think of wi Electric Wizard, I think of cool, psychedelic monsters and interdimensional space demons, not the cover of obituaries inked in blood mixed with original Sins cover. It's like the Electric Wizard version of that guy who carved Slayer into his arm. And personally, I find it really cliche. Basically, I'm a longtime fan of Electric Wizard. I've traveled the world to see them, and this album is leaving me feeling mega conflicted. I think it's smart for Electric Wizard to shift back to something different because Sludge is so oversaturated right now that if I never saw another band wearing those fucking bell bottoms with sun amps, I'd be really stoked. But because I am conflicted and because I seriously can't decide if this is kind of good or kind of bad, I'm giving it the ultimate middle of the road number. It gets three skulls out of five here on Overkill Reviews. That said, I have a complicated relationship with this band because I've been following them for 15 years. So that rating might change and it might change for you too. Why don't you let us know? Head over to bangertv.com and submit your own rating. Guys, am I done yet? I need to go for a smoke break with my buddy Satan.